there are some new quotes about sign stealing in baseball, and they come courtesy of two players for the Los Angeles Dodgers, one of whom was playing for the Boston Red Sox in the midst of their sign stealing scandal. Before I share those quotes with you, I want to tell you something that you might not want to hear. These admissions aren't the smoking gun that a lot of you want it to be. It's close, but it's not quite a full admission by the Dodgers, per se. There's an article in the Los Angeles Times about new Dodgers employee J.T. Watkins. The Dodgers, so outraged by Astro sign stealing, hired a guy away from Boston who was at the center of their sign stealing scandal. Before and after games, writes the Times, Watkins was tasked with decoding opponent signs, which was legal. As the team's video replay coordinator, however, he also used his access to live game feeds to, quote, supplement or update, end quote, his work. This in-game use of video to decipher signs was illegal. The details gathered by Watkins were passed on to the bench and used by runners who reached second base, who in turn would steal the catcher's sign and signal to the hitter the kind of pitch that was about to be delivered. It's interesting that it's only when it happened on second base. That's at least what baseball was going with. That's at least what the Red Sox are sticking to. Do you believe that? Do you believe that the video was only used when runners were on second base? That is how some of these teams are claiming that their sign stealing was different than that of the Houston Astros. I'll be honest. I have a hard time believing that. You have video access to see signs. You're only going to use it when runners are on second base to signal. You're not going to perhaps have someone in the dugout relay information to the field so that you are you're no, you know what pitch could potentially be coming. But there's no proof, which is, again, why you're, you're probably going to be somewhat disappointed with what Mookie Betts had to say about the Boston Red Sox stealing, st- stealing signs because they were stealing signs, but they weren't doing it in the playoffs and in the World Series. Here he is in that article by the LA Times. Mookie Betts acknowledged he was aware his team was using live video feeds to steal signs. Yeah, everybody was, said Betts on Sunday. However, Betts said the Red Sox didn't use the sign-stealing system in the World Series against the Dodgers. Very convenient now that he is a member of the Los Angeles Dodgers. The Sox batted 353 with runners in scoring position in the series, which they won four games to one. The Red Sox were found, writes the LA Times, by the commissioner's office to have employed the illegal sign stealing program only in the 2018 regular season as the investigation uncovered insufficient evidence to conclude that they cheated in the 2018 playoffs or the 2019 season. Sure, I don't think they looked very hard. Betts continued when asked when the scheme was used to say it was infrequently used every now and then. It's kind of hard to remember the actual quote. He also says it wasn't a daily practice. We had gold glove winners. We had MVPs, silver sluggers. Take it into account. So you read that and you're like, wow, the Dodgers at the very least are hypocrites bringing in Mookie Betts, who along with those Boston Red Sox also robbed the Dodgers of a World Series. All the Dodgers World Series, they've been just stolen from them. Like Smeagol's Precious was stolen away from him. Dodgers don't look good here. But remember, Mookie Betts wasn't playing for the Dodgers, and we already have an idea that the Red Sox were cheating in some way, shape, or form. That's why Alex Cora got suspended from baseball for a year, only to be welcomed back into the Boston Red Sox a year later. Clayton Kershaw also weighed in on it. And I think some people are looking at what Clayton Kershaw had to say And also see a little bit of hypocrisy. Because if we had someone from the Dodgers go on record talking about the allegations that they used an iPad that relayed signs to the dugout 
after which a player would verbally indicate what pitch was coming, which I think it stands to reason the Boston Red Sox probably did some version of that. Then if you add this quote with Mookie Betts to the Clayton Kershaw quote, all of a sudden, boom, it's the smoking gun. And we can finally punish the Dodgers and the Red Sox, right? Kershaw said he didn't have any problem with the Dodgers bringing on JT Watkins. Who'll assist Dodgers players with a hitting game plan saying, no matter what enhancements technology had back then, there needs to be a clear distinction between what the Astros did and what everybody else did. Since no one's going on record talking about what the Dodgers might have done with an iPad that was supposedly, again, able to send signs to the dugout, which were then relayed to hitters via players, coaches in the dugout, because we don't have anyone going on record there, like Mike Fires did with the with the Astros, talking about the trash can being banged, we can't go any further than we're at right here. We almost have enough evidence, but we don't quite. So this is where I ask you, are you ready to move on? Some of you don't want to. It's hard moving on in life when you feel like you've been railroaded stabbed in the back. I'll speak from experience. It sucks knowing that you aren't ever going to get that vengeance or whatever feeling it is. You hold on to it longer and longer, though, and you're going to find yourself probably slowly and slowly getting more unhappy. And, you know, I just finished watching the rewatching the wire. I'm going to make a wire reference here. Uh, McNulty, who's one of the main characters on the wire is a detective. He is obsessed with his job and he hates the red tape that gets in the way of him doing proper police investigations. And he is obsessed with the job to the point that he feels that when he eventually puts a case together and puts some horrible people behind bars, that there's going to be this big like reward or something for him, this feeling that he is going to get. The reality is that was never going to happen. It's outlined to him by another detective on the show, Freeman. He says, you're chasing this thing. What happens when the case is over? The case is just done. There's not a parade. So the people that are hoping that there will eventually be some information that definitively implicates the Dodgers, because, sorry, this does not definitively implicate the Dodgers. It makes them look like hypocrites. It does not implicate them in sign stealing, even though I think there's fair reason to guess that, yes, they were stealing signs and relaying it to hitters in real time. If you're not going to get that ever, do you really want to keep pushing for it or acknowledgement across all of baseball that it was happening? Do you need it that badly? And I, I say that because we talk about parades that McNulty never got. You guys had your parade. You just had it. You had it in 2017 too. And you could continue to get bent out of shape about the idea that other teams got away with it. But I'm honestly of the belief that it's time to move on. I have maintained throughout all of this that, yes, teams across baseball were doing this. But, and it's a big but, the Astros still won a World Series. That World Series wasn't taken away, and now they have won another one. They can't take that away from you. They can try to make you feel like it wasn't legitimate, but you think it's legit. Why do you care what any of these other people think? If you want to get under their skin back, the easy thing to do, as this Patriots fan will tell you, is, yeah, they got away with cheating. Your team should have tried a little bit harder on that front. But I think we still have a lot of people who aren't willing to let it go. I I'm telling you, it's time to let it go, guys. It is. It's time. Y you have the second World Series to legitimize this dynastic run, at least for Nick Wright. Six straight American League Championship Series appearances, four World Series appearances in the last six years, two World Series titles. It's time to let it go. It is. Yeah, this looks bad for the Dodgers. They look like hypocrites. We already thought they were hypocrites. 
Did, did we need this? <laughs> did we really need this? I don't think he did. It's time to let it go, guys. Easier said than done. I will say this as someone who felt like he was completely stabbed in the back at a place that he once worked. What good does it do me to hope that that gets exposed someday or to root for failure? What, what good does it do me? I, I'm just going to slowly and slowly spiral more and more into madness. And again, we're talking about sports fandom here. We're talking about fanaticism. You know, it is it is a very different, you know, kind of feeling that is in your mind. Like, oh, how dare these people question the team that I watched sweat and fight to get these championships, especially in the wake of Hurricane Harvey. Maybe it makes it a little bit more personal to you. But, uh, guys, I, I think it's time to let it go. We're, we're all obsessed with it. It's been, shoot, it's been three years. Turn the page. But maybe you disagree, and if you disagree, you can call in 713-780-3776 to call to text as well on the most interactive sports talk show in Houston. Move on from baseball's sign-stealing scandals. There's some interesting tidbits in Evan Drellick's book. The Dodgers look rather hypocritical with that piece in the LA Times. But none of us are ever going to get what we want, which is, I guess, justice for other teams across baseball. Thomas in the Heights has a thought on this. What's going on, Thomas? Let it go. Let it go. That's just all. Let it go. Yeah, dude. Totally. Totally agree. I think it speaks volumes of the Houston fans, and I love my Houston teams, but I always feel like Houston fans are always, like, trying to fight the national media, everyone else, man. Be proud about our teams. We, we're a dynasty. It doesn't matter. We're going to repeat this year. Just talk some crap and have a good time, man. But yeah, let's let it go, man. I'm past it. Amen, Whatever. Thomas. Let him squawk. Love it. And I also love the singing. Side note on Frozen, and apologies if any children are perhaps in your vehicle, but we got to talk about Elsa. Okay? She is a terrible, terrible person. Honestly, you know, the. 1200s, 1300s, 1400s, she would have been properly burned at the stake as a witch. Okay? She's evil. Um, gets her sister killed. You just overlooked that. And every single kid wants to be Elsa when they grow up. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, who are these kids looking up to these days? You Seriously, know? Sean. This is one of the worst role models there is. And for every single parent, who has been out there and has watched this movie 70,000 times because your kids are in that two to five or six years old phase where they like to watch the same thing over and over and over again. My thoughts are with you. And just know that I believe Elsa should be sent to jail. Oh. Answer for your war crimes, Elsa. Right. Oh, her sister comes back to life. It's fine. That's still negligent homicide. I've watched The Wire, as I've told you a million times over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, what does McNulty have to say about that? It's a good question. He'd probably be too drunk and forget what he was doing and perhaps, like, you know, uh, go to a bar and, and, and uh, hook up with a floozy. But if he was on the case, he, he would get to the bottom of it eventually, and there would be no parade at the end. Yeah, it's time to move on, people. It's time to move on. I do think that the second World Series really helps. I, I feel like that really, really helps us move on. The the validation that yeah. comes with the second one. That's, and the, then that's it why kinda, we move it, on. It kind of makes the the first one more valid. At least in it makes it easier to defend the validity of it. And then, yeah, I think I think if they had lost the World Series last year, I feel like I feel like we'd be much more of the type of fan that thomas outlined we're, we're st still going to war about this but we we won we won the war is over it's done and and now it's like oh but let's hunt down everybody no it's 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 over just just move on peace is neat splendid wonderful uh some other thoughts uh a texter move on hell nah i don't give a f about the sign stealing i would do it again now hell yeah 
trash cans, buzzers dinging, Theragun rumbling. I don't care. Win another. Keep being the heel. Oh, yeah, and get Jordan a damn hand massage therapist or something. Damn. <laughs> I like that little PS at the very end. Another texter. The first football coach I ever had said, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. Time to let it go. They all do it and always will. How old were you when this guy said this? The first football coach I ever had stands to reason that if you are someone who lives in Texas, that this coach might have said this to you when you were in like third grade. That's when I first started playing football, fourth grade. So tackle football. Did a, did a coach tell you that when you were like eight? I, I heard that when I was in, like, fourth grade. From an actual coach? Yeah, my dad. Hell yeah. You know what? Mr. Mapes, shout yeah. out to you. This is the way I play basketball. That sounds like something straight out of the Mighty Ducks with Jack Riley, the head coach yeah. of the Hawks. It, it, we won a lot, just like the Hawks did. The Hawks would have won, like, 20 district titles in a row if not for that loser, Gordon Bombay. He's a total loser degenerate. If he didn't commit crimes. They would have mm -hmm. still had their dynasty. 100%. A Gordon Bombay, you know, goes on from being a failure with the Hawks to, like, being, like, an absolute sleazebag lawyer who gets a DUI and gets out of the DUI by doing community service with kids where he drives in a limo on ice with kids in the limo, could have killed all of them, had them drown at the bottom of the ocean. Then he finds out that one of the kids' moms, Charlie's mom, is hot, and he decides... Hell yeah, I'm going to get me some Charlie's mom. He gets some Charlie's mom, somehow becomes a father figure to Charlie along the way. And then at the very end of the movie, instead of going back to his career as a very successful lawyer, perhaps bringing Charlie and his mom out of the clear poverty they live in, because Charlie's mom works at a diner. Instead, he says, you know what? I'm going to go play minor league hockey. And he gets on a bus and he just leaves them. By the way, the same Gordon Bombay decides to snitch on the Pee Wee Hockey League and make Adam Banks, who has grown up playing with his cake-eater friends, leave the hockey team with his friends, the Hawks, so that he can go play for the Mighty Ducks and the Ducks will have an advantage. Gordon Bombay is a giant POS. No one understands it except for me. You're welcome for that explanation.